Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the president of Brandywine Realty Trust, Mr. Jerry Sweeney. How is everybody? Good. It's very intimate in here. Uh, well, look, first of all, thanks to Philadelphia Magazine for inviting me. Uh, and there's a great agenda lined up today. So it's kind of interesting when I'm talking about the topic I'll go through in a few minutes is, you know, today you're going to have your mind expanded. You're going to talk about public policy, innovation. You just heard about health care. Uh, some really fascinating topics. So to try and tie in what I plan on talking about to some of those exciting topics are related to the real estate business. Uh, I think this is the clicker. Okay. Uh, you know, everyone loves to see a high-rise tower go up. Uh, everyone watches the concrete, the steel, the cranes, the glass move up, and they love the organized chaos of a construction site. Uh, what I'm going to talk about today in, in terms of development is basically focusing on the structural foundations that make that building strong. And the structural support system I'm going to talk about today is taxes in the city of Philadelphia and what the impact it has had on job growth, and really moving Philadelphia to where it should be, which is at the top echelons of cities, not just in the United States, but in the country. So let me take on a little bit of a journey. Indulge me for a few minutes, because whenever you talk about taxes, people get very upset and very bored. But we're going to try and move it along pretty quickly. So I'm here today representing a coalition that calls ourselves the Philadelphia Job Growth Coalition. It really is an amazing group of different types of organizations that are all focused on changing the trajectory of the city of Philadelphia. And look, you're all Philadelphia boosters. Philadelphia Magazine is certainly a big booster for the city. The reality is the thing that befuddles a lot of us is with all the great things that the city of Philadelphia has going for it, why can we not grow jobs? Why can't we get more companies to locate downtown? Why can't we get economic enthusiasm that matches our social, cultural, restaurant, retail renaissance. So what we're going to spend a few minutes on right now is who we are. So we are a very unique group of organizations. We represent a lot of diversity, both in terms of economic and social interests. We are the African American Chamber of Commerce, the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, the Greater Philadelphia Chamber of Commerce, the uh, Northeast Chamber of Commerce. We are an unheard of aggregation of labor and trade unions ranging from electricians, carpenters, the Building Trades Council, uh, the Teamsters, the SEIU, who have all seen this, the path on that line for you as a good path for the city. And it's a great collection of civic organizations, uh, BOMA, the Committee of 70, CPDC, uh, uh, the General Philadelphia Building Contracts Association, a whole group of people who are vested in the city of Philadelphia who are befuddled by that same challenge of how we grow. And our goal, very simply, is to basically change the trajectory of where Philadelphia is and put Philadelphia on a path to become one of the nation's top job growers over the next 10 years. And let me walk you through what we're going to do. What was motivating us? I don't know if you can read that, but basically Philadelphia, after 40 years, since 1970, more than 40 years, frankly, has been losing jobs. Now, the rate of our job decline has slowed in the last couple of years, but the reality is we are star still very far underperforming both northeast cities and cities around the country. More importantly, the economic impact of slow job growth or job decline is striking. We have one of the we, Philadelphia always has a much higher unemployment rate than most cities in the United States. Philadelphia has one of the highest poverty rates in the United States. We actually have the terrible distinction of having the highest deep poverty rate in the country, uh, as well as a lot of other different statistics I could go through and bore you with. But what we need to do is create an environment where small businesses, minority businesses, great example, Philadelphia has one of the highest percentage of minority-owned sole proprietorships, single-person firms. We have one of the worst growth rates of moving those sole proprietorships into multi-employing companies because there is no growth within the economy. So one of our objectives is to bring Philadelphia's tax structure into, an, into alignment with the growth cities all around the country that rely more on taxing physical plant attributes, not what can move. 
and to build really on the excellent work of previous tax reform commissions that have identified this problem. And this problem's been identified for almost 40 years, and we really haven't done much about it. Let me show you a couple slides that will strikingly illustrate what we're talking about. This slide shows that since 1970, Northeast peers have grown their job base. Now on here we have Boston, New York, Washington. Uh, Philadelphia, conversely, has lost almost 30% of its jobs. 30% fewer jobs today than when I graduated, I didn't graduate four years ago, but I graduated a number of years ago uh, in the city of Philadelphia. So, so the job base today, when I started working downtown Philadelphia at, at a school, is much smaller than it was uh, back then. Look at, the, look at the bottom part of the slide, though. What's fascinating is, what, what two cities do you see down there? Philadelphia, and what's the one that's right beneath us? Detroit, Detroit Michigan. Now, is that a great statement? You all know what Detroit went through. And look at the attributes Philadelphia has versus Detroit, which is a great city, but positively selling all the wonderful things we have. And now here's another statistic that motivates us. 37% of the people who work or who live in the city of Philadelphia go outside the city to work. It's the highest percentage in the United States. Now, if you think about a harbinger of future doom, think about if you're commuting from Center City or one of the neighbors in Philadelphia out to King of Prussia, South Jersey, Wilmington, Delaware, and then think about that juxtaposed again with our school system in the city of Philadelphia. That means all the great gains we've made over the last 10 years will start to move away. By contrast, we spike out here, New York City has less than half of the percentage of people who li live in New York who move out to the, who work out in the suburbs. Oop, I messed up. But anyway, uh, what I, what, on that last slide was basically half of our jobs in the city are between University City and Center City. So to a great degree, we're kind of isolated from what's happening, but the reality is that neither Center City which is undergoing a great renaissance, or University City, which is clearly on the upward trajectory, or is growing fast enough to offset the citywide job decline. So, okay. We've also been a little bit insulated. When you look at statistically, we have a very strong eds, meds, and hospitality industry. And that really has kind of kept us moving through both good times and bad times. But Look at what we're, we're losing at a very accelerated rate, high paying jobs in the city of Philadelphia. So we're growing low paying jobs that are service industry based, and we are losing higher paying jobs. Look at this, 68% of municipal tax revenues in the city of Philadelphia come from uh, taxing wages and businesses. That is by far the highest in the United States. The other thing that's striking is look at the, the uh, kind of red slice of the pie, that's real estate taxes. It's less than 20%. So Philadelphia also has one of the lowest rates of taxes on real estate among major cities. Completely inverted, we do a lot of business in Austin, Texas. Their primary source of revenue is property taxes. And they're growing at 136 people a day on average moving to Austin, Texas. Last year, 50 companies located their corporate headquarters in Austin, Texas. So stark comparison what we're doing. So the 2003-2009 the tax commissions, very smart people, very diverse in their backgrounds, all concluded there are a lot, that our local tax policy is a major cause of our decline because if you overtax what can move, if you do that, guess what happens? It moves. And that's what we've seen over the last 40 years in the city. So from uh, just a couple other snapshots, Philadelphia's wage tax is four times the regional median. It is also, also, one of the most punitive taxes in the United States for lower income people. Uh, the, our business tax, our BIRT, has no counterpart in the region, and it adds a 20 to 30 percent premium to companies who are evaluating moving in downtown Philadelphia. Our property taxes are 66 percent of the regional median. So what we're looking at doing here is where we are today, real estate taxes are 18%. What we want to start to do is start to shift the revenue base of the city of Philadelphia to be more real estate tax centric, less wage and business tax centric. Very, very important. 
to bring us more in line with other cities, but also if you think about it this way, 93% of general fund revenues in the city of Philadelphia come locally. Only 7% comes from the state or federal government. So if you think about it thematically, we will never be able to provide enough revenues for services, schools, bridge replacements, infrastructure investments, unless we grow our job base. So structurally, that's why I was talking about the analogy with an office building, structurally we really need to focus on how we begin the shift. And like most things in life you hear everybody talk about in public policy, you can't turn on a dime. We've been in this muck for a long time. We've got to start the process of changing it around. So let me walk you through what we're thinking about. We, we engage, our group's been together for about four years. Uh, and it's been a long four years because you're beating on a lot of doors and we've had some great dedicated people on our team. We hired eConsult, dealt with PFM, the PICA board, a number of economic forecasting firms. And we said, What's, how can we make Philadelphia job grow? And they came back and said, look, we're confirming the results of the previous tax commissions. The reality is we need to change how we, we tax things. So we can generate under our plan between 50 and 100,000 jobs. The most recent forecast out of eConsult was 80,000 jobs. So what does that mean? Uh, that means you could, uh, the city could be building a brand new building every two years. Very important because the ripple effect of employment growth can't be overstated. So what we laid out here is that for every 500,000 square feet of office space, it generates uh, you know, 3,300 jobs, both office workers and a lot of support staff. It generates tremendous volume of activity through the construction trades. That same building fills 11,000 hotel nights with business travelers, generates almost $3 million a year in annual retail sales, and puts over 2,000 riders on SEPTA. The impact on parking, residential development, revenue taxes is, is, is fascinating. What does it mean? If you just were able to take, and I, I look at this through the office standpoint, there's well, a lot of other stats on other sectors, but if you just take a look at office, which is my chosen craft, if we're able to move rents up $1 in the city through driving demand downtown, that generates $8 million more in city revenues. If we increase rents to the high 30s, which is the level, frankly, of Chicago, that would generate $87 million more dollars to the city in real estate taxes. If we are, have an aspirational goal of, goodness gracious, getting as good as Boston, we can generate $100 million a year. Just coincidentally, that's around the same number every year the school district is short in financing. So great slide. One of the last stats I'll show you is you take a look at revenues, uh, you know, uh, revenues per, uh, uh, per pupil. The state average there, if you can see, is almost $400,000. Philadelphia is less than half that. So the, the real estate taxes we're getting compared to Lower Marion, Radnor Township, Council Rock, Pittsburgh, et cetera, is half of the state's average. That's one of the structural problems we have in terms of generating enough funding for good education. So uh, look at this, this slide here. I mean, from the, uh, for growing jobs under our plan, if you meet that fifty to $100,000 job uh, generation, you can generate over $350 million more over the next 10 years than the city's five-year plan's projecting. So what are we doing to, to kind of wrap things up? Real simple. We are suggesting that we make legislative changes where for the first time in the city's history, the business community, building owners, commercial landlords, are basically saying, we believe so much in the city of Philadelphia, that we are prepared to pay more in taxes. We want to invest in the city's future. We're, we're frankly scared to death that this city will not take advantage of all of its great attributes. So we're prepared to pay more with one caveat. That more money we pay has to go into a dedicated stream to reduce wage and business taxes. Unfortunately, that requires a change in the state's constitution, which I'll walk you through in a few moments. But the statistics and the benefit of that are compelling. So here's what we're, we're suggesting. Uniformity is a provision in the state's constitution that says every class of taxpayers has to be taxed at the same level. So we are suggesting that commercial properties pay 15% more than residential properties. So if you live in the city, your taxes don't change. If you own a commercial property in the city, your taxes go up. The amount of what that, that increase in taxes does 
is it goes to, and it be dedicated by state law, which is why there needs to be a state uh, a constitutional amendment, is, is dedicated to reducing wage taxes, and the target is to get it below 3% over the next decade, and to reduce the net income portion of the business tax in half over the same period of time. We can get there, we can get it done, and the reality is it would put Philadelphia in a much more competitive position. So we said that's a great idea, does it work? So we actually went out to a lot of the accounting firms in the city, a bunch of big four here and some regional firms, review with the tax and policy group of the Greater Philadelphia Chamber of Commerce. They took a look at their, at their client base throughout the city. And in every single case, I should say 99.9% .9 of the cases, uh, companies were better off by paying more in real estate taxes and having a reduction in their business taxes. Very simply, there are about 90,000 plus commercial property owners in the city of Philadelphia who pay taxes. There's about 14,000 companies that pay BIRT. So just the size of the base creates that revenue differential. And then the, the, the fun part of it, if we get it done, is that the day this plan goes into effect, everybody who works in the city of Philadelphia gets a pay raise because we start reducing that wage tax over the next 10 years. Businesses get a, a, a benefit where their taxes are lower, but more importantly, what they get, and those of you who are in business understand this very clearly, what they get is a very powerful message of effective public policy. What they get is the ability to plan their business. What they get is the ability to decide that Philadelphia is a great long-term location for their employees. They don't have to worry about every year taxes going through the roof and every year there's a, a, a financial crisis in the city that we tax businesses. So this is, this is where business and civic leadership is so important. You really wind up in a situation where, and again, I want to amplify two important things. I know you'll forget everything I said in 10 minutes, but remember two things. <clears throat> One is there has never before been a coalition of people this broad and this diverse. And imagine all those discussions on what priorities we should set for the city. Should it be schools? Should it be bridges? Should it be infrastructure? What should it be? And we said, look, the problem we have is we don't have jobs. There, that is a fundamental challenge we face. If you take a look at, at our schools, take a look at poverty, unemployment, we know, you all know, that the structural unemployment, not the frictional, but the structural unemployment rate in some of our neighborhoods is over 50%, which is why we have a deep poverty rate. We need not just job training programs, we need jobs. We need companies to invest in, down, invest in Philadelphia, bring their jobs here from outside the region, decide, the companies that are here decide to grow because we're more competitive. So we're, we're out canvassing around, we started the legislative process, had a very good read in local city council, we're talking in Harrisburg. It is a huge lift. So don't let, let anybody tell you it's not. We, we need to make a change in the state constitution. We need uh, approval by two consecutive legislative sessions in Harrisburg. Once that happens, it then needs to go to a statewide vote. Now, it's a very heavy lift, uh, as I said, but it's been done before. And what's most important, if you really think about it, like what, what keeps this group going? And, and we go out and we talk to groups, the, the level of support we get is amazing. Because I think everyone is sitting there saying, this city has so many great things. My goodness gracious, look at this city. Demographically, nationally, the trends are to what? Urbanization, effective urbanization, creative urbanization, equal urbanization, you'll hear on later. The reality is that Philadelphia is right in the path of an accelerated growth trajectory this city hasn't seen since the, since the age of manufacturing. So when we talk to people today, they sit there and say, well, you know, geez, the city's doing pretty well. People are moving downtown. There's restaurants opening. This is exactly the moment in time to go on the offensive, to make sure that we are in a position to really be very successful going forward. And the, the thing that keeps us going all the time is that the risk of loss is incredibly high. If history is an indicator of the future and we do nothing, this city would be on path to lose 35 to 40,000 jobs over the next 10 years. So check out PhiladelphiaJobCoalition.com. There's some brochures in the back. We have a lot of information on the website. We are looking for support. 
uh, whether it's uh, individually talking to your legislators, whether it's uh, organizationally joining our cadre of members, but it's very, very important, and I thank you very much for taking the time to listen to me. <laughs>